All right, welcome back, everybody. Sorry, I forgot to start my video. So here is warm up number one. If you want to pause it and do the work and then check your answer, that's great too. Um, but honestly, number one out of the warm up was that new from yesterday? No. I mean, we've been doing that for days now. This is the new stuff from yesterday, right? Number two was the new stuff from yesterday because there was only one little new piece. Where did those cancel out? Or no? What? Or they're not always that. When what? Cancel I try out? to cancel them out like on the homework that I did. The negatives? Yeah. Here's what you do. You kind of. Yeah. Kind of. What do I do with the negative? Make it whatever. I, I have to factor it out, right? I have to take that negative. Since it leads with a negative, I have to factor that out. So in this case, I'm going to write negative one times and then divide it out of each piece. Now, essentially, what does it do to all the signs? It flips them. That's all I'm doing here. I'm making my leading coefficient positive. Okay, bring that down. Again, the only reason I'm arrowing that down is because it has to stay part of your answer, and I tend to forget about that negative one. And I don't want to forget about that negative one. That negative one needs to stay. So I arrow down that negative one all the way to the end. What do I do with this middle trinomial here, then? We'll factor it like we always do. Oh, man, 6 times 28? 132. What am I doing to you guys? 132. Uh, that's more than Oh, man, I took your word for it. I took your word for it. it you, did, you said it confidently. Well, here, we can, we can do this. Just show me to property this. What's 6 times 20? 120. And what's 6 times 8? So 120 plus 48 is 168. Okay, factors of a... Now, that's even worse. 168, add together to get 29. 21 and 8? Okay, I, now I'm going to take your word for that. That's correct. Okay. Uh, 21 times 8. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you that big of a number. I just made that up at the beginning of... Shh, shh, just made that up at the beginning of the period. All right, so we've got a 6x squared plus 21x plus 8x plus 28. All right, factor out my GCF. Could I put the 8 first? Of course. And this would look a little different, but still, same answer. All right, pull out a 3x. We're left with a 2x plus 7. Pull out a 4. 2x plus 7. Sure. So we good with splitting it up? Yeah? So I just looked at my GCF. What divides 6 and 21? 3. That's why it came out. And then I divide, actually divided 2x and then the 7. And then I've got the 4. I divide 8 and 28 by 4. So that's why I had the 2x and the 7. And look at that. Do you see the common binomial now? 2x plus 7. So I'm going to come down here to my answer and put the 2x plus 7. And then my leftover pieces, 3x plus 4. And there's my answer. So remember that the, the new stuff from yesterday wasn't even really new, right? It, it really was more of the same. The only new piece was just dividing out that negative one at the very beginning. All the other steps are exactly the same. All right. Um, now, looking back on your homework, um, these percentages actually went up since this morning. Um, but I want to do two of these problems, okay? I especially want to look at number five. So if you have your work for your homework, Please go ahead and get that out because I want to look at number five and I think um, maybe seven. I can't really read that there, but I think seven. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at number five here first. What do I have here? I've got an, a hard type. So I've got six. You want to know your issue here? What I thought you and a lot of people would try that. Can I even start to do negative 6, positive 1? No. no. And that's the issue here. 
I get, yes, you are, you are complete. Because I just have people like, well, it adds to get negative five. You're right. But that's not even a factor of positive six. You can't even start that. Okay? You can't even put that on your list because that does not equal positive six. It would have to be negative six and negative one. And then it's not negative five, it's negative seven. So there must be another set of factors. Negative two, negative three. Okay? So we've got 6x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 1. All right? And now we factor by grouping. We pull out a 2x, and we're left with a 3x minus 1. And now, take a look at my second set of terms. I lead with a negative, so therefore my GCF must be negative. I must have a minus down below there. But is there any common piece of 3x and 1? No. So you just write a 1. So in this case, a negative 1. All right. Now that changes my 3x. Plus 1, minus, okay, negative 1. Which means my final solution is a 3x minus 1 and a 2x minus 1. Henry's here. Hi, Henry. Hi. Um, Brianna, which one did you say? Number nine. Number nine. Let's just go over that one. Because that one is very similar to number seven that I have up here. Uh, number, oops, come on, come on, come back to me, come back to me, there it is, number nine. There we are. Mitchell, do you think we're going to have a soda tomorrow? Yeah, it all kind of depends on the, the temperature. If it goes up at all, if it goes up at all, it's all rain. If it goes down at all, it's all snow and it's not enough snow. We got to be in that sweet spot where it's ice. Yeah. Okay. So it all depends on the temperature. Let's take a look at number nine here. Now, 65% of you got this right, which is kind of a higher percentage than the other ones. Um, but I think this is a good one because this is the new stuff from yesterday. Can I go straight away and multiply negative four times five? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. What do I have to do with that negative? Pull it out. So negative one times. So this is a positive 4c squared minus 19c minus 5. Now, arrow that down to your answer. Now I'm doing negative 20. Factors of negative 20 that had to get to negative 19. Oh, 1 and negative 20. Negative 20 times 1. So I've got 4c squared minus 20c plus 1c minus 5. And now we factor by grouping. G always shakes his head at me like I'm doing something wrong. See, I don't know why we can't just multiply negative 4 and 5. That makes no sense to me. It's like, but we've done that for every other problem. It's like, no, because you can't get this is the only this is one of the first times where we have a negative out front. And it's not you cannot do that. You so cannot it's always negative. When you if the leading if the leading coefficient is negative, you must always pull it out first. There's so much going on. I, I can't pull it. Put it out. All right. Now we factor by GCF here. We pull out a four C. Okay. I want to say something, but it's recording. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll hold that. C minus five. What's my GCF out of my second set? One. One. A positive one to get a C minus five. Now, my common binomial is the C minus five, and the leftovers are the four C plus one. Daniel? It should, now what do you mean backwards? That's fine. It still should have taken that as a correct answer. Okay, good. 
Yeah, because if you put negative um, negative 20, a positive 1 first, then negative 20, then you're right. It would be opposite, but it should still get the same answer in the end. All right, let me give you the guided notes for today. Right here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You are all over the place today. I know. What's wrong with you? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Enough sleep? Yeah, actually, yeah. It's better than enough sleep. Maybe that's a too much sleep. What time is it? Too much sleep. What's better like 10 minutes? Let's see you. I was doing homework for your class at 1130. All right. As soon as you get this, as soon as you get this, foil one of the two problems at the top, please. You can pick, but as soon as you get this, foil one of the two up at the top. You can do both if you want to. Now here's what I will say. Today, there is only one new piece for today as well. But go, go ahead and foil one of the two up at the top. Now, when we learned multiplication, we actually learned this on a different day. And we said, ooh, these are, these are ones that there's actually a trick for. These are ones that there's actually a, a shortcut to. And I said, I wanted you to learn how to use this shortcut. If I foil this, watch, because I bet a lot of you are already done. X times X is X squared. X times 4 is 4X. Four Negative 4 times x is a negative 4x. Negative 4 times 4 is a minus 16. What happens here? What happens? My inners and outers cancel, don't they? Leaving me with only the first and the last terms. And what operation in between them? Is it always subtraction? Always subtraction. Remember this, this trick? Square the first, square the last, put a minus sign in between. We call this a difference of squares. Let's do the other one. 5x and 5x make 25x squared. 5x times negative 6 is a negative 30x. 6 times 5x is a positive 30x. 6 times negative 6 is a negative 36. What happens to my 30x's? They cancel. That will happen every single time. Now, what was my setup? What allowed this to be a trick? What about my initial problem told me that that was going to happen? Does it set up uniquely? Uh, in the first one, the signs are flipped. Yeah. I have the exact same thing out of the binomials, except one is minus, one's plus. Right? Okay, so if our job for this section is to go from here to here, right? So what we're going to be looking for is a two-term polynomial. Oh, okay. I taught you how to do four-term polynomials. That was grouping. I taught you how to do three-term polynomials, easy type, hard type. And now what we're going to be doing is two-term polynomials. Well, there's a very, very, very specific case. The only time you can ever factor a two-term polynomial is when you can call it a difference of squares. A difference of squares. Okay, so the name implies difference. Got to be a subtraction sign, right? Just like we always ended in a subtraction sign, right? It has to start with a subtraction sign. Difference of squares. Okay, they've got to be perfect squares. What is a perfect square? Something that you can square root and it'll come out nice. Something that you can square root and you can come out nice. Now, in terms of a variable, I'm looking for an even power of a variable, like an x squared or an x to the fourth or an x to the sixth. So let's look at an example here. 
I've got, I've got x squared minus 49. So what I need to check is to see if it's a difference of squares. First thing, is it a minus? Yes. That's our first box to check. Is it a minus? Yes. Is the, are both of the terms perfect squares? Is this a perfect square? Yes, because yes, it's got an even power on my x. Is 49 a perfect square? Some of you may question that. It is, but how do we check? Wait, but if it's negative. Hold on, hold on. You were just looking at the terms, not the minus, because that was like, okay, it had to be a minus in between. If you wanted to check, just go ahead and plug it in your calculator. The square root of 49. Does it come out nice and even? Yes, it's 7. Okay? So, are they all, is this a difference? Yes. Are they perfect squares? Yes. So what I can do here is go straight to my answer where I know one's going to be a plus and one's going to be a minus, and I can write out my perfect squares. Well, the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 49 is 7. And that's my answer. See, if it's a binomial, it's a very specific case where this can be factored. If I turn that into a plus sign, Guess what? Prime. If one of those are not perfect squares, guess what? Prime. Okay? So it's a very specific case. Difference, all squares. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, looking at example B. Is that a difference? Yes. Is this a minus sign? Yes. Yeah. Is 9 a perfect square? Yes. If I square, nine, square root 9, I get 3. Does x have an even power? Yeah. Is 64 a perfect square? Yes. So if it was a third power, it wouldn't be. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be an even power. So, and yes, 64 is a perfect square. If I go to my calculator and do square root of 64, I get 8. All right. So this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to create my two parentheses. Does it matter where the plus or minus go? No. Just make sure it's one of each. Square root of 9. Square root of x squared is an x. Square root of 64 is an 8. 3x minus 8, 3x plus 8. Again, if that turns into a plus, prime. Any one of those is, a, is not a perfect square? Prime. This is the only thing that you can do with a two-term polynomial. Yep. Like, where'd you get, like, 3x, though? What's the square root of 9? Is it 3? three. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. So you're just, like, basically just... Square rooting, square rooting everything. Square rooting both the... As, as long as it fits the criteria. But if it's not, it's prime. Right. If... Like, looking at this one here, does it check all the boxes? First off, is it a difference? Is this a minus sign? Is 4 a perfect square? Yes. If I square root 4, I get 2. Is z squared a perfect square? And what I'm asking there is, does z have an even power? Yes. Is 1 a perfect square? What happens if I square root 1? You get 1. Wait. I get 1. So are all these perfect squares? Yeah. Yeah, we checked everything. Yeah. I thought it had to be an even number. Like no, 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 no. The, that's only the power. The power on x or the variable has to be an even number. No, it don't matter. Like what the, the number is, like the size of the two. So. Right. These, these all have to be perfect squares, basically. And the rule for a variable to be a perfect square is the fact that it has to be an even power. Now, once you have that, you can create your two parentheses, one's with a minus, one's with a plus, and you square root everything. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of z squared is z. So my first term is a 2z. And we just saw the square root of 1 was 1. 2z minus 1, 2z plus 1. Let's take a look at my last example for this one. All right, let's check our boxes. 
Is this a minus sign? Yep. yep. Is 16 a perfect square? Yeah. Yep. Four. Is A squared a perfect square? Yeah. Yep. Is 81 a perfect square? Yeah. yeah. That's nine. Okay. So I've checked all my boxes. One's got a minus, one's got a plus. If I square root 16A squared, it's 4A. I square root 81, 9. Okay, now let's take a look at the next set. Let's take a look at the next set of problems. Let's do one of these together. Let's do the first one together. That, let's do the x plus 7 squared. Now, can I distribute the power in? No, you cannot do that because there's a plus sign in there. So I had an x plus 7 and an x plus 7. Okay. Now, we learned a trick for this. But I told you guys not many of you guys were going to use it. And that's okay. A lot of you guys just foil this. Totally fine. You guys were good at foiling. I will say the same is true for the reverse. I'm going to teach you guys a trick to recognizing when it's got to be a perfect square. But guess what? Can you factor like always? Of course. You can always just fall back on the regular factoring. Here's what I mean by that. This is an x squared. 7x, 7x, 49. So these are going to come out to be an x squared plus 14x plus 49. Notice that, again, we're going to be focused on going from down here back up there. Remember, my rule was square the first, double the product, square the last. If you can recognize that pattern then you can bring it all the way back up top without showing any work. But the thing is here, guys, what are the factors of 49 that had to get to 14? Seven and seven, right? So you, right, just know the factors. See, and that's, that's where I say you can learn the rule, but are you actually gonna apply the rule? I don't know. You might just know how to factor it, which is great anyway, right? This is what's called a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial, basically one that it's going to come out to be a binomial square. Here's what I mean by that. Take a look at my first example here. I mean, I'm on example 2A on the back. Like, I could recognize that there's a pattern here. However, can I just factor this like normal? What are the factors of 16 that had to get to 8? 4. 4 and 4. And that's what make this, makes this a special case. The fact that I can say the factors of 16 are 4 and 4. So like 16 is a perfect square. You can go ahead and put the box here. When the numbers are the same. This is, this is why it's a special case. So really I can say x plus 4, x plus 4. Right? I want to reduce that, though. Is that what you were going to ask? No, I was just going to ask if I could put just x plus 4 to the side. That's what I mean. Oh, we're okay. going to reduce that, though, into just one single term, x plus 4 squared. OK? So that's the only new thing here. We're, we're just reducing it one more time back down to its binomial square. Let's do that again. Now, is this an easy type or a hard type? Okay, so it's going to require a little bit more work than the last one. Still, factor it like normal. 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, what factors of 36 add to get to negative 12? Negative 6, negative 6. And again, that's what makes it a special case. The fact that we have the exact same number is going to mean something's weird with this. And weird in the fact that my answer is just going to be that binomial squared, two terms squared. 
All right, so we've got a 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9. Factor by grouping. Pull out a 2x. 2x minus 3 is left over. What's my GCF of my second set? Negative 3. Negative three. All right, so that leaves me with a 2x. 9 divided by negative 3 is a negative 3. And now look at my look at everything that I've got here. My common binomial is a 2x minus 3. What are my leftovers? Another 2x minus 3. So we can say 2x minus 3 squared. That's what makes it a special case. The fact that we have two terms that are the two binomials that are the same. So in this particular case, would you require us to reduce it down? I would want you to, yeah. Okay. To like put it as one binomial right. squared. Right. Okay. No? So whenever the number is just multiplied by itself, that's what you can do the square thing? Yes. Yeah, moral of the story is that, yeah. Um, you could probably do the last two real quick on your own. Um, they're more like example A. Because uh, are these easy types or hard types? These are easy types. What are the factors of 9 that add to get the negative 6? Negative 3, negative 3. So you could say x minus 3, x minus 3. But in the end, I want you to get to x minus 3 squared. What factors of 25 add to get the negative 10? Danielle? Negative 5, negative 5. Now, do you have to show this second step where you write out the two binomials? No. I want you to get to the point where you just go x minus 5 squared. And that's my answer. Okay? So, did we learn anything really new today? Well, I guess, yes, in terms of the binomial, right? That difference of squares, that, that was new. But for this, this stuff that we just did, is that new? Is that the last thing that's been done? Yeah, so tomorrow we will review, Tuesday, Monday we will review, quiz, Tuesday of next week. Just a normal Tuesday, not like a really big Tuesday. That's a bummer. That's a good day. Yeah. What am I going to need to know to run enough?